I do not have any financial interest or of a product in my talk. Wish I did, though, et cetera, et cetera. Thirteen dentists were in a bar after a mercury meeting. No, no, that's the urban legend. Right, Steve? Where's Steve? Actually, 1972, I stopped doing amalgams. And I was at a meeting in 1984 with Murray Vimy, where I met him, and uh, mercury was discussed. Later, mercury, Murray decided that uh, there wasn't really much scientific information relative to the mercury issue. So he got uh, 50 names and addresses from Huggins and wrote a bunch of us saying he wanted to have a meeting up in uh, Banff, Canada. Well, 13 of us showed up, and that was the beginning of the academy. My memories are that uh, we had excellent hosts, Murray and Bonnie. I mean, they rented vans, picked us all up at the airport individually, must have made 10 or 15 trips at least. Uh, Semi-wined us and dined us, took us to the big hotels, the uh, chateau at Lake Louise. We had a fantastic lunch, and this was my first visit to Canada, so seeing all this beautiful scenery was, to me was fantastic. We spent three days the first day, primarily um, coming up with a name. And we went back and forth whether we should be national, international, North American, or what. And, we, and then whether we were going to be the non-toxic dentistry. Uh, and the only thing I contributed was you don't put a negative in. So we ended up being International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. Murray and Aaron Ryan, our, our PhD lawyer from Canada, had uh, written a preliminary bylaws and constitution. And over that three-day period, we went over that and, and, and finalized it and came up with ideas, came up with uh, general modes and methods of, of how we wanted to do things. Our first uh, board consisted of Murray Vimy as president, Bill Duell, who, who was our one physician as vice president, Michael Ziff as secretary, Bob Lee as treasurer, and continuing still is Michael Pock as our sergeant at arms. He was the big guy in the room that was waving everybody in for this meeting here. My memories uh, relate more to meeting a bunch of guys who were thinking like I was thinking. And it was kind of refreshing because I used to go to other dental meetings and it was like parting the ways to avoid talking to you about mercury or the issues. So it was comforting and that comfort has, has continued to occur over the past 25 years. This, this is the finest group of individuals and it's always like coming home. Uh, let's see if I've left out anything of interest. That's the end of my long speech and I'm glad I've got my flight and meals and hotel paid for. <laughs> Who's next? Hello, most of you know, know that I'm not a dentist, and, uh, but I have very distinct memories of a, an unusual group of people when yeah. all of you are sitting here. And some of you I remember right from the very start. Uh, I got into this about 1988, didn't even know who you guys were. And I published a paper that, that caused and changed my career, and it just said that mercury can mimic the biochemical abnormalities and abnormal biochemistry that you see in Alzheimer's disease. And I published that, and I thought, it's just a simple paper, nothing would happen. And then I get a call, uh, and I think Bob Reeves set this up with Mike Ziff, 
would I give a talk to the International Academy of Oral and Medical Toxicology? And I thought, sure, they're a group of toxicologists, they'll like this. And, uh, and many of you that were there, you remember I gave you a, 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 an exquisite talk about generation of nitrines with photons on nucleotide binding pro uh, nucleotides binding to proteins. <clears throat> and I remember that meeting because you know I teach a lot, and I could look out in the crowd and see the blank stares. <laughs> and I thought, well, who am I talking to here? But I remember one person, and that was David Kennedy. He set up kind of front and center, and he never took his eyes off of me. <clears throat> and after the end of my talk, <clears throat> uh, I mean, after someone knocked over the carousel of my slides at the end of the talk, uh, I don't know who did that, but I'm, for historical purposes, I'm blaming Rick Channon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, he asked me, he says, Dr. Haley, is it safe to say that your work shows that mercury might exacerbate or even be causal for Alzheimer's disease? And I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, so what's going on here? Well, you know, that went on. And, and you know, and I, I actually, I, mean, I left that meeting think, you know, I've been surrounded by a group of uh, people from Mars. <clears throat> they were sticking probes in my mouth showing me the mercury came off of a mountain fillings. And I was wondering what trick they were doing because the FDA wouldn't allow that. They just wouldn't allow somebody to put something in their mouth that would put off that much mercury vapor. And you know, so I was very circumspect when I left. Uh, fortunately, when I went home, I, I got my own mercury vapor analyzer and I found out you guys were right. And so I, I joined in the fight with you. And what I remember, uh, at one time making a comment with regard to this issue that I felt like I was in an eight-year argument with a town drunk. Y you realize that today I'd have to say a 20-year argument with a town drunk? Because this is so obvious. And I have read, and I'd encourage each one of you to get from Jim Love or Bob Reeves their latest missive that they have put together for a legal challenge. What you have to really put, <clears throat> you have to ask the question, <clears throat> what kind of a lousy, government agency could read all that data and declare that amalgams were totally safe to put in anyone. I mean, give them some support. They need that. The science is there. The science will keep coming out. But we really need to get these guys in court where they have to answer questions. The things that, uh, and I'll say her name, Dr. Susan Runner stated in her comments on this, you know, were absurd. Any chemist, any biochemist, any toxicologist sitting there looking at this data and listening to her talk would have booed her off the stage. I mean, it is criminal what they're doing. We need to support the lawyers. It's not a matter of science. The science has been done. This is done a long time ago. Hell, Murray Remy was telling me the bad things about mercury and amalgams when I first met him. And I, I remember sitting in an airport with him in London. We went to uh, our dental amalgams done in Europe or amalgam status quo or something like that where we decided to do the work on the uh, rat brain, rats that they exposed to mercury vapor. And we looked at them, they had an AD-like brain. That should have ended it. I mean, it should have been ended by Murray's earlier studies, Murray and the, the studies that were there, but it, it isn't. The thing is, these people aren't gonna be convinced by more and more science. You can shove it down their throats, you're going to have to take them to court. And I'm a scientist, and I don't, I'm, I'm not particularly fond of the lawyering community. But this is the fact is they are a necessary group, and this is what we need to support right now. I also wanna say something else. The, the health of my family has dramatically improved over the last 20 years. And I owe that to the people sitting in this audience. You guys woke me up, got me off of my, out of my ivory tower, and made me start looking at things pragmatically, and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I have a wonderful wife who tolerates uh, an erratic, high-strung, <laughs> whatever else you want to add to me, but, you know, <laughs> outside of uh, don't, don't be too uh, negative. Uh, and she had 15 amalgam fillings. And I saw the transformation in front of my eyes as she had them removed and, and the length of time afterwards. You guys are right. Stay the fight, but you have to bring these people to some place, to some sort of judgment. And I want to tell you, my 20 years with this group has been the most satisfying experience with any academic or research-oriented or elemosinary group that I've ever been. And I thank you for including me in in this uh, uh, a group. Thank you very much. Do you want to just hold on to the mic and just make a comment if you want? Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs>
Phil's telling me I can make comments. That means he's going to say something awful about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my talk's going to be a little bit different. I've got some things that uh, you can see and uh, make comments about. How do we get this uh, to go forward? There we go. So first, a little bit of housekeeping. Understand that these are my mercury poisoned memories. <laughs> and you all know what mercury does. So I apologize for any uh, omissions or misspellings. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh during this or you can cry because it is a little bit of a walk back through some of the things that we've been through. Uh, shout out, please, if you recognize times and places that I may not have on there or I even don't even remember. Oh, did you change? Okay, here we go. So this is uh, one of the earlier pictures that I have of the meeting that we had in Atlanta, Georgia. And what I remember mostly about the meeting was I was welcomed with open arms. I received my letter about the Calgary meeting two days after it occurred. And I was incredibly disappointed. And there was no way that I was going to miss the meeting down in Atlanta. And so uh, the, 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 the fellow standing next to me, oh, by the way, this doesn't apply to all of you people that are there, are here, but I look at this organization as that was the time of the founders being flat bellies. Now some of us are round bellies. So, you know, people like Mike Pock who's standing next to me in that slide. Mike, stand up. This is Mike Pock. He's been our sergeant in arms forever. And Bob Lee, is Bob Lee here, uh, Murray? No, he didn't, he wasn't able to make it? Okay. Uh, Bob Lee was our treasurer for many years. And of course, Ronnie Dressler, who you heard from, and Murray, Murray, stand up so the new members know who you are. This is, this is the Murray Vinny. And of course, uh, Mike Ziff, who left us a few years ago, and Dave Reggiani. Where's Dave? He's in the back there. Okay, now this is a unique picture. This is Ronnie and Rita, his lovely wife. And Ronnie is a unique person in the Academy because he's the only president who served two terms. So the first picture is when he served his first term, the second picture is when he served his second term. In a, pardon, Ronnie? <laughs> And this is Sam with his new book, The Toxic Time Bomb, and I think all of you have, have seen it and read it. Um, it. It was a very interesting time in the Academy when that uh, book came out. It gave us a way of telling our patients that there is the science and here is the science, and we don't have to promise uh, unusual results. The science speaks for itself. And of course, Dave Kennedy and Betty. I met Dave at the second, or the first annual meeting, actually, it was in New York. And after the meeting was over, uh, I had a late flight. Dave had a late flight. So we uh, went to dinner together, and we spent two hours talking. I walked out of that dinner meeting with, with Dave, and I said to myself, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and, and I think all of you would agree that uh, Dave is unique in his own personal way. And of course, Murray and his wife, Bonnie. Bonnie, would you stand up? Come on, Bonnie, stand up. <laughs> and of course, Paul Rubin and Jeff Green uh, and John Wilson and our current president, Steve Coral, uh, all have an integral parts of this academy making it work the way that it does. Now, this is an interesting photo, okay? With all due respects to uh, Laura Clifford, this is really a picture of uh, my three best friends in the Academy. My wife, Pat. Pat, you in the back there? She's in the back. And Rich Fisher. I met Rich Fisher uh, in 1984 when I f went to my first homeopathy course. And Rich was giving it. And I talked to him at that time and a year later, and finally he joined the Academy. And Rich is, uh, for those of you new members, uh, Rich Fisher, where are you, Rich? 
Stand up there, Rich, way in the back. I think that Rich is one of the key people that has, uh, uh, is the glue that holds this academy together with his incredible uh, uh, ability to get speakers, quality speakers, year meeting after meeting, year after year for this academy. He's done a marvelous job with that. Now, Laura, this really is a, I didn't really have this picture, uh, the picture that I wanted for this slide. So Laura was a good substitute. Uh, she came in on those balloons and floated down in front of my good friend Dave Reggiani. Dave, you want to stand up over there? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we did do some work. It wasn't all fun and games. We began with four meetings a year, then we went to three meetings, then back to four, and we finally settled on two. Uh, lunch was on our own for many years. Uh, the original officers, if you look on the sheet inside uh, your folder, the original officers actually had two-year terms, which by the time you got done was uh, something like about seven, eight years of uh, working on this. It was difficult, but we, we didn't have the resources to have, uh, have it the other way. Uh, a lot of you don't remember, but our Academy song was the Whippin' Poop song because of Murray's research with sheep. We're poor little lambs who have lost our way. Ba, ba, ba. And we would sing that and just have fun with it for quite a few years. Remember, Murray? Uh, at that time, for quite a while, the meeting chair did both the arrangements and the program, which was quite demanding. So some of our meetings were a little erratic on what we were able to accomplish. Uh, board meetings were on Sunday mornings, and they would last forever. And they would finally end when the last person had to go get a flight back home. For the first four years, there were about 25 of us. Eh, it might have gone to 30, but by and large, it was kind of like uh, the choir was all there, and we were speaking to ourselves. Uh, we all agreed with each other, and, and uh, we had a good time but it seemed like we were never going to really start to grow. Uh, the first meetings were in Calgary, Atlanta, New York, and Denver. Uh, and uh, what I really remember is Bob Reeves. Where's Bob? Bob, stand up. Bob would eat anything left on anybody else's plate. That's what I remember. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Peggy Ziff and Michael's mom, Helen. Uh, this is interesting. This is uh, Sam Ziff's nutrition. Sam hated banquet food. He hated any decent food. His idea of a decent meal was to go to McDonald's. Uh, so Michael, uh, Michael, one time, my wife decided that uh, at the 10th anniversary in Detroit, she went out and got a McDonald's meal and, meal and had him bring it out on a plate, and Mike was happy as a lark. Uh, here's some of the wives in the early times. Uh, Marsha, who uh, was meeting and greeting at that time, and for the last how many years, Marsha, have you been uh, treasurer now? It's been a while. She's done a marvelous job. Where are you, Marsha? I don't see her. There she is, back there. And Jess, this hat is passed on from president to president. Uh, at that time, he was confused but happy, and he had no idea what uh, was in store for him at the time uh, that he became president. Uh, this was a, a meeting with uh, where Ann Summers, who you'll see later in this program, was presented an award. And you can look at the people in the background with Walter Pressey uh, and uh, Boyd Haley and Mats Hansen from Sweden, who worked very closely with Sam uh, uh, through those years. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Ronnie Dressler and, of course, Murray and, and Jess on the right-hand side. So the evolving history of the Academy uh, was uh, in 84 was founded. We established fellowships in 1986. Uh, original committee of standards of care was formed to try and uh, uh, kind of uh, organize the science for the academy. Uh, we added scientific review committee because of some uh, legal issues. Uh, then uh, we got academy sponsorship uh, by the Academy of General Dentistry. And when we did that, our, our membership jumped uh, probably doubled at that time, well, uh, once we did that. Uh, we established around 1984 executive director because we were getting so large, you know, running practices and whatnot, it was almost impossible for the, for the uh, members to run a practice and also do the functions of the academy. 
Uh, we established accreditation and education program in 97. Uh, then we changed scientific reviews uh, or standards of care into scientific review because we were concerned about uh, uh, holding us to a standard that was uh, 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 not really acceptable by the ADA, but somebody could hold us to it. Uh, we established mastership in 2005, and in 2006 we rearranged the bylaws. Uh, part of it had to do with the uh, uh, problems with 9-11, uh, uh, so that it would be here in the United States. And uh, then we added uh, clinical practice guidelines in 2008. Uh, Rich Fisher put together a fellowship in 1986, and Rick Channon, where's Rick? Stand up, where's Rick Channon? There he is back there. I think all of you know him because he still pre, uh, you know, does the day on Thursday, and then we have mastership in 2005. So here's our legal team. Uh, Jim Love, and uh, I don't know if Janice Stopka is on the legal team, but she probably is. Everybody's on the legal team to a degree. And uh, Pierre, everybody knows Pierre. Where's Pierre? Pierre's right there, okay. Uh, now, where's Bob Reeves? But first, actually, I'll handle, handle Rick Channon. I think Rick is at the left-hand side of the table with a peer. Okay? And Bob Reeves is on the other side of the table watching these guys eating all their desserts. That's what I think. <laughs> and of course, uh, what about Charlie Brown? I really, I really was wondering whether I should put this in. Uh, and right now, to some degree, and we've all gone through this, and this like, one of the things that makes this academy great is that we, we have a single-minded purpose and nothing really gets in the way. But right now, to some degree, Charlie's in our doghouse from one degree to another. But at the same time, I think we really, even though Charlie has never been a member of the Academy, he has done an immense amount of good towards moving this in the right direction. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, right now, we're not really happy with the situation, but at the same time, I think we have to recognize that he also has done a lot. Ed and Carol Arana. Uh, Ed, uh, founded the American Academy of Biological Dentistry in California and I spent a lot of time over the years talking to Ed about the function of his academy and the International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology. It is now the International Academy of Biological Medicine and Dentistry. Uh, and, uh, uh, but what we always said was, you know, they're kind of a step beyond. You know, dentists aren't going to jump into their academy without first learning about mercury. And this isn't an advertisement for what they're doing, but I think that there's a place for these different groups. And I didn't have a picture of Boyd. <laughs> so this, this is Boyd and, and Stormy, his, his dog, uh, when he gets a chance to go hunting and forget about the OSR, the ADA, and the FDA. Did you want to make a comment there, Boyd, at all? No, no, no. no. You're fine? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our scientific advisory board is an integral part of the academy. The chair is Boyd, Louis Chang, Vazipagian, uh, Herb Needleman, and Tom Burbecker. Uh, consultant is Matt, Matt Berlin, and the liaison is Rich Fisher. Uh, and of course, our U.S. Congressional Relations Committee uh, with currently John Rowe. Where's John? For those of you who don't know John, is he, is he here? John is in back there. Uh, originally, Bill Chatfield helped us out a lot with that, and of course, the liaison is Rich Fisher. And of course, the other member who I think is really important here is Mike Fleming, who's the, our consultant, not our consultant, but he's a consultant on the FDA Regulatory Affairs Panel. Uh, Mike? So here's some of the members, some of the meetings that we've gone through. Mark Flack isn't with us, uh, but Jack Hall, where's Jack? In the back there, okay. Uh, and of course, Ronnie was just on here. Uh, Dave Kennedy and Jack and uh, my wife and I and uh, Mark Flack uh, uh, on the left-hand side and Betty Kennedy and, and Jess and Laura Clifford uh, having a good time after the meeting uh, or during the meeting uh, in one of the evenings. Uh, and this is just Rick, Rick Channon making a point. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Jack Hall has probably gotten the point and we're just having some fun here and laughs. I think one of the things about this academy which, which makes it so unique is that uh, we're, we're really, really true friends. We're not here to, I mean, yeah, we want to make more money and we want to, but you know, our main goal is, is, is to bring the best care we can to our patients. And along the way, we have all become one big family. 
Uh, Ward Eccles awarded his fellowship uh, by Walter Pressey, uh, with Bob Lee looking on in Colorado Springs. Uh, and the wives uh, doing what they do uh, when we work. Uh, Peggy Ziff and Annette Flack and my wife, and of course, uh, I don't know who horse is, but horse is in the picture too. Uh, and more of the wives. What would we do without our wives supporting what we do? It's, it's, it's just amazing uh, how much they have to put up with at times uh, with uh, our shenanigans. And the re they are the real strength of the academy, because without their support, uh, we couldn't uh, be uh, uh, possibly doing all the things that we'd like to do. Uh, and now the last part of it is really our, our fun and games part, our ADA Memorial, Memorial Golf League. There's not a whole lot of participants, uh, but uh, we, we go by the ADA rules that we developed early on, that we can lie and cheat and put any score down that we want. <laughs> And, and, and I like to say, and boy, boy, I've told Boyd this many times, what I enjoy about going out hunting and playing golf is, is and, and I think this is a part of our academy, is that we can lie and cheat, uh, uh, tell dirty stories, and really insult our friends. Now, that's a little different from the ADA. The ADA lies, they've got bigger lies, maybe the FDA too. They cheat, we know that. They have no friends and they attack their enemies. So here's our leader, Walter Pressey, for many years. He would give awards uh, at the banquet, uh, and our pros, Bob Culp and Dave Reggiani, and the other hackers in the group. Uh, and anyone who's interested in playing, please join us. We had three foursomes uh, on Thursday morning, this last time. And just some awards. I think the one that's, uh, uh, two of them that are important is the one on the bottom left there, with, uh, uh, he gave us a lecture uh, one time, Ed Arana gave us a lecture on fractional golf. So instead of putting your right score down, put like a half stroke or something like that. And of course, uh, Dave Reggiani has to continue to practice and uh, we were just walking off, we were done. He, uh, and of course, uh, with mastership, here's a few of the masters. Uh, I think that aspiring to mastership in the academy is a, a very noble thing and, and uh, uh, we have a program for it, so uh, the members who don't know how that works, you can contact the office and learn how to do it. But uh, these are some special friends of mine, and it's a long list. It's probably just about, uh, and I may have left some people out, uh, but uh, uh, Kim Smith is one that I really want to highlight, uh, who's our executive director, who's done a marvelous job for us. Uh, somebody who I, I think a lot of you may not remember is on the top right, Jim Massey, who really, uh, uh, worked with Dave Reggiani uh, for some years, teaching him about uh, corrosion and galvanism. It was a very important part of our academy in, in learning all about that. So thanks again for the memories, past, present, and future. Uh, and I'm proud to call all of you my friends. Thank you.